Good evening, everyone. This is a work session of the Board of Trustees of Harlando Independent School District. The time currently is 6.18. And we will begin our meeting. This meeting will be held Wednesday, June 15, 2016, beginning at 6.15 or 6.18 p.m. Central Office, PDC Room, 102 Genevieve, San Antonio, Texas, 78214. The board may go into closed session on an agenda item, on any agenda item, if permitted, under Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code. In such event, the board president will announce the applicable government code section prior to the board going into closed session. And this meeting is now called to order. And to my right, I have Mr. Juan Mancha. Present. Mr. Tomas Uresti. Here. Mr. Ricardo Moreno. Here. To my left, I have Mr. Madrigal. Will you go ahead and announce your... Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Here we have with us this evening, we have our Executive Director for Operations, Mr. Jerry Soto. Here. We have our Executive Director for Human Resources, Ms. Diane Tudyk. Here. We have our Assistant Superintendent for Business and Finance, Mr. Ricardo <coughs> Hernandez. Here. And we have our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction, Dr. Carol Parra. Yeah. And we have our public information officer, Mr. Andrew Fernandez. Right. And I do hear, uh, I do declare a quorum present. Um, and just so that uh, everybody's aware, this is, this is a budget work session. So what we're gonna do here, since it's a budget work session, um, if members in the audience have a question because there was no citizens to be heard, you were not able to sign up as a citizen to be heard. But if there is a question in the audience, you may raise your hand once the presentation has been completed and then we will acknowledge you. Thank you very much. So we will go ahead and begin. And at this time, I believe Mr. Hernandez. Yes, Madam Chair, this time we're going to have Mr. Ricardo Hernandez go ahead and, and lead, up, lead our budget workshop. Mr. Hernandez? Thank you, Mr. Madrigal. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, this evening is a follow-up budget work session uh, to the last one that we had on June 1st. Uh, that session was a couple of weeks ago, and under uh, what Mr. Madrigal's recommendation was to give the board time to review it and evaluate the information that was presented along with the pay study that was presented on May the 4th. Uh, during that time, we've met with uh, various board members and we've uh, answered some questions and also have researched additional information that, that was requested. Uh, like any budget item, the most critical area of discussion, of course, is the pay structure and the financial impact. And as we know, payroll costs uh, for our budget, 84% of that uh, represents uh, the total budget. So, Madam Chair, if, if it's all right with you, I'd like to have Kathy go ahead and uh, present uh, the recap of the recommendations that they had and the, the impact it would have on the district. Yes, sir, go okay. ahead. Okay. Uh, Zach. Again, this time we have Zach Hobbs again, uh, compensation consultant with Tasby and News Cadena, who's also a senior compensation consultant or consultant with Tasby also. Zach? Good evening. Uh, as uh, Mr. Hernandez stated, uh, we did the uh, original presentation back at the beginning of May, and you should have that report uh, that was presented to you back then. I'm going to do a, a brief overview of what we covered then, uh, and you should have this PowerPoint presentation, I'm told, as well, so you can follow along. Uh, but this is just going to kind of be a recap, an overview of the key points of what we discussed in the, the presentation. Uh, so starting off, um, just to remind you of the 12 peer districts that we looked at, uh, that's on the, the um, page two of, of the PowerPoint presentation that you have. And so we chose these 12 peer districts um, in conjunction with conversations with administration to determine a market group. Um, so you have a list of those 12 peer districts here. Obviously those are districts that are here in this area that you compete with for employees. Uh, just a quick overview of the market comparison, we start, starting off with our teachers. Um, if we look at your teachers, you can see that 
Uh, the current salary, uh, the current starting time salary for your teachers is very comparable to the market median rate. Uh, that dark blue line shows the market median and the, the lighter blue line shows Harlandale ISD. So a starting salary, you're even with the market and then you, you lead the market up through about 10 years and then at 10 years, uh, the, the market starts passing Harlandale ISD and you're lagging the market beyond 10 years. The next slide just shows the detail of that. Uh, and, and so this is page five of the PowerPoint presentation. It shows the, the detail, the, the specific di districts and what they're paying at those different um, areas that we survey for at year 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. Um, we have worked with just about all of these districts, I believe, here in the San Antonio area. And, and so they, they all are on a market-based pay structure that we're presenting for Arlingdale as well. I have a quick question, Mr. Hobbs. Yes, ma'am. What is the red arrow on there represent? Is there anything specific? Yes, ma'am. Very, very good question. Uh, the red arrow is where Harlingdale ISD falls in there. So uh, we have these ranked from high to low with the starting salary. So Southwest ISD has the, the highest starting salary at 51575 And then out of this group of 12, Somerset is the lowest at 47000 uh, Harlandale's starting salary, current starting salary at $50,000. Would, would fall in that range, and I put them uh, um, at the top of that group that are all starting at $50,000, but um, they fall right there uh, where that red line would be. Thank you, sir. Very good question. Uh, the, the next thing that I do want to discuss is, and we talked about this previously, is the master's degree. Uh, currently, Harlandale has a separate pay range for their master's schedule for the teachers with a master's degree and it varies widely based on years of experience. Uh, it, it varies from $500 down at the low end up, all the way up to over $6,000, uh, specifically $6,630. And you can see where it peaks there, um, there around 34, 35 years. And so it's a, a wide variance and typically what we don't see is uh, that master's degree to change based on years of experience. It's not very equitable to to portray it that way. And so we'll talk about the recommendation here in a minute of, of how to correct that issue. Uh, your non-teaching staff, um, mark comparison for them. Uh, this is just a quick overview, overview on page eight of all of your non-teaching staff. We went through this in a little bit more detail uh, back in May, but your central administration staff, which is uh, your assistant superintendent and directors at central office, they are 7% below market median pay overall. Uh, your campus administration staff, which is going to be your principals, assistant principals, counselors, and employees of that nature, is 3% below the market median. Your professional staff, diagnostician, nurses, instructional coaches, uh, they're even with the market median overall at 100%. Uh, your technology staff is 9% below the market median. Your central administration support staff, that's going to be your non-campus clerical staff. So that's clerical secretarial staff at the central office that's not on the campus is 11% below the market median. And then your campus administration support staff, so that's your clerical and secretarial support on the campuses. Uh, they are 8% above the market median. And then your instructional support are going to be your classroom instructional aides, those that are assisting teachers in the classroom with instruction are 8% above the market median overall. And again, this is overall, there are some jobs that are above or below market, um, but this is when we look at them in aggregate for that group. Okay, I have a question for you on this yes, one. When we say the percentage that we are below, um, for example, the first one, right, central administration is currently at 7% below the market. Yes, ma'am. The market that you're comparing it to is currently those 12 schools, is that correct? Yes, and so uh, we take those 12 schools, we take the salaries for the, the jobs within that group. So, for example, um, we would look at an assistant superintendent job for different areas, whether it's finance, or whether it's over curriculum, but whatever area that is, and that we use that those jobs as benchmarks. And we'll, we will come up with the average salary out of those 12 districts for that specific job, and then we'll look at the median of those average salaries and compare that to what Harlandale is paying that same position. And I and guess 
for me, I was a little bit, um, I guess, perplexed that we used all 12 because a better comparison would be the ones that are the same size as Harlandale. And not all of them are the same size because there are some that are way larger than Harlandale. And when you look at, for example, the first line that I mentioned, central administration, how many employees or that they handle. For example, if we look at Northside, there's 103,000 students versus ours, which is 15,000. And then there's 13,000 employees versus ours, which is 2,100 employees. Yes, ma'am. So that's just kind of where I think it's kind of skewed. That's just my opinion on it, because I was looking at the numbers, and that's one of the things that I mentioned at the last meeting. No, you're making a good point. And those are things to take into consideration. Um, at some point, uh, the, the job is going to be the same, depending on the district. But you're exactly right. Once once a district gets so large, that, that job may be over different areas and may have a few different responsibilities. Uh, but those are things that are that should be taken into consideration. Um, so for you know, it's it's seven percent below the market. But you're right. There are some districts in there that are much larger. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hobbs, uh, going off of what uh, Ms. Costa said, and uh, I guess thank you for uh, providing that uh, insight into it. Because we don't want to negate anything in terms of what these uh, directors of these positions are doing, but um, I think the scope of work, I mean, that does kind of play in, uh, into it. So how should we actually um, uh, maybe perceive that or look at that, I mean, coming from your expertise? Um, I mean, we have a, a school district of 103,000 versus uh, a school district of less than 15. Uh, I mean, I know the difference between having 30 plus kids in a classroom versus having 18. You know, makes a significant difference in my, my workload. Um, so, um, how how do we um, dissect, uh, dissect that and use that to kind of equate into our minds so we can see that maybe perhaps um, they they are justifiable in, in compensation. If, if I know you um, you guys received the, the final report uh, back in May, and Miss Kadena just uh, reminded me on page three of of the final report, if you have that available. Um, the, the last sentence of the first paragraph there at the top, uh, she just reminded me, we, we did exclude the largest three peer districts for district level and above positions. So that would be your central administration group. So that means that uh, north side um, would be excluded from there, um, northeast would be excluded, and then also San Antonio ISD would be your three largest districts. We excluded those from the comparison for those. For the Mr. Hobbs. Because um, I know, uh, I kind of spoke on it briefly uh, with Mr. Hannes. I know there's some districts, uh, particularly where, where I work at, we don't have, we have a large number of directors in sure. certain positions. Um, and their salaries may be uh, a little different in terms of, of what they do, uh, their scope of work, and their compensation. Is that also considered, um, you yeah. know, where you have some, some, pe some districts that have uh, nine uh, assistant directors of such and such, versus us having a smaller number. Is that sure. also considered? Or? Well, well the, the, the mathematically, that should take care of itself. If you have multi incumbents within the same position, you know, we're taking the average salary of those employees from that district. And so if, if there's 10 employees in the same job title, then we're gonna take the average salary out of those 10 employees. So it's gonna average out based on their experience level, um, skill sets and things of that nature. Sure, but I mean, there's always sometimes where I feel like maybe there's a position where it's kind of, uh, kind of skewing the numbers perhaps that you know, maybe they're not doing uh, as much uh, or having a difficult job as others maybe on that uh, administrative team. So uh, to me, that I'm just kind of thinking about that way. You might have someone with a six foot figure job and we're, we're asking ourselves at the lower level, why is that position available and why is that even uh, there? Okay. Um, so, um, as, um, as Zach has mentioned earlier, when we look at the market group, um, you know, we're looking at the median values um, of those school districts that they reported. So, if there is um, a high or a low, the reason that we use the median is because it's not influenced by the extreme highs or the extreme lows within that data set. 
So if we have outliers, which that would be the case for a job, let's say a district reported a salary for a director that um, is an outlier, um, it would not be included in the calculation of the median because the median value is basically the centermost uh, set of data points. Um, and we don't use the average because the average is uh, influenced by highs and lows within a data set. So to your response, uh, using the median addresses the issue of some data uh, being reported that are outliers uh, as a result of districts paying somebody um, excessively high or excessively low. Just, and just to clarify, yeah, it, I mentioned averages, and, and Ms. Cadena is talking about median. So let me let me clarify one thing. First, central administration staff, you're you're typically going to talk about single incumbent jobs, and so we're, for example, we're going to take the salary for those positions from those 12 school districts, and if there's more than one person in a specific job, we're taking the average salary from the school district. But once we get the salaries from the school districts, that's when we look at the median. We take those 12 average salaries, and that's where then we use the median from there, and that's where it takes care of that outlier that Ms. Kadeem is talking about. So I, I didn't want you to be confused because I mentioned average and she mentioned median. It would those be nine, are two different calculations. Would it be nine average salary, salaries if you're uh, excluding it, the three largest? Is yes, that correct? Yes, it would be. Okay. It'd be. It would take those nine for the director levels and above for the. For the central administration staff, yes, ma'am. It would be the nine, and then we would we would choose the median out of those nine. Yes, okay. ma'am, you're correct. For the other groups, it would be the 12. Yeah. Yes, okay. ma'am. Thank so, you. So definitely for um, the sing, what we refer to as single incumbent administrator jobs, as Zach mentioned, which fall under that central administration, mm -hmm. those, are the, those are the positions where we excluded those three, three large large districts. school districts. And okay. everybody else, we included all 12 districts in the uh, market comparison. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good questions. Okay, so now I'm just going to um, go through the recommendations. Again, this is just to, to highlight the recommendations that were in the report. Uh, this is page nine on the PowerPoint presentation uh, that you received. Uh, so the first recommendation uh, deals with teacher salaries and we are recommending increasing the starting teacher salary to 50500 also to provide all continuing teachers an $825 pay increase, which is 1.5% general pay increase overall. So every continuing teacher would get $825. Uh, the, and then also part of that recommendation is to provide additional equity adjustments for the market. So if you remember back at the, the slide that we looked at earlier, um, I believe it was on page uh, four of the of the PowerPoint presentation where it showed where um, you're lagging the market, where your teachers are lagging the market. We're going to try to address some of those with the, with the adjustments for the market. So some of those middle years, we're going to try to address those. And so there's additional adjustments there on top of that $825. So, Zach, what you're telling us is that Besides 825, then there's a certain group that uh, your report and TASB's consulting work is saying to add more to. You, you got it. That's exactly right. So, so some teachers, based on their experience level, would get um, an additional adjustment on top of that 825. Yes, sir. And again, that is to eliminate uh, the graph on page four where it shows where aren't those very competitive to a certain point? But then all of a sudden, when we get to certain years of service, then we fall behind the market value. You got it. And actually, this next slide, page 12, will kind of show that. Um, so good little segue there. Uh, the, the two blue lines are what I showed earlier. The green line is where this recommendation would move Harlandale to. So you can see it takes out that, that blip where you fall below the, the uh, market median there um, in, in those middle and late years there. So we're trying to address that. Um, and uh, Mr. Hernandez will, will talk about some uh, some other general pay increase options and cost. Uh, the one and a half percent is what we provided in the final report, and uh, just to clarify that, so you'll see some other costs from him here in a minute. Uh, continue on with the recommendations. 
Uh, the other piece tied to the teachers was the master's degree stopping that we talked about. So again, currently Harlandale has a separate uh, schedule for teachers with, that have a master's degree. Uh, what we're recommending is to create a set dollar amount for master's degree stopping. So every teacher would receive $500 stopping if they have a master's degree. Uh, and then what we would do is to, to make sure that um, teachers are not losing money we, we would eliminate that, that pay range, but we would also grandfather those teachers. So we would roll those that are receiving above $500 for their master's degree, we would roll that into their base pay. And so there, no teachers are gonna lose any money. Every teacher, even your, those with the master's degree, are going to get the $825 pay increase, uh, the general pay increase. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is that the average, or do you know what the average is that's being paid? across all the other districts for teachers with master's degrees? Because I know the range was pretty high based on that scale that you showed that it started at 500 and went all the way up to 6,500. Right, for, for Harlandale, that was Harlandale's. Now, are you asking about for Harlandale's or what, what other districts are paying? I'm just wondering, yes, what the average is that other, because the one that you have on here, which is on page six for my fellow board members if they want to look at that or go back to that page it shows 500 all the way up to 6500 is that this is actually for harlandale only correct yes ma'am that that's that's harlandale's uh, they have a separate currently harlandale has a separate pay range for teachers with a master's degree okay so what and we're saying here is if we go with this recommendation mm -hmm. anybody who's receiving over the 500 dollars Let's say they're receiving six thousand five hundred. Yes, ma'am. Then six thousand of that would go into their regular salary. Y yes, ma'am. It's exactly right. So, so we're not taking any money away. We're just shifting that money. But doesn't that increase their actual tax bracket? No. And then more taxes would be no. deducted. No, it's from still the it's still a salary. Okay. That's still part of their salary. The way the stipend is being, the way that Harlandale is paying that stipend, it's a it's a salary. They're on a separate pay schedule than what your teachers with the bachelor's degree. So it's. It's not affecting their, their income at all. It's not affecting their tax bracket. Okay, uh, so my question too is, I don't know if you have the answer to this for Mr. Hernandez. Does a stipend have taxes deducted from it? Yes, sir. It does? Yes. Okay. It's, yeah, the, the, the stipend we're talking about here is paid out um, on a monthly basis along with their salary and it's taxed just like their, their base salary, isn't it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mr. Hernandez. Mr. Hobbs, you're saying that if they have a two thousand dollar stipend now, it would be reduced to fifteen hundred, and then the five hundred dollars is added to it, or they, they continue to receive the fifteen hundred, okay. the, the two thousand dollars, and then the five hundred dollars is added on top of that. Uh, no, sir. Let, let's let me see if I can I can help explain this. Um, so let's say you have a teacher that uh, is made their their base salary is fifty thousand dollars, and they have a master's degree, and so that places them on the master's degree schedule. And so let's say that because of that, they're making $55,000 now. So 5,000 of that is based on their master's degree. We're gonna take 4,500 of that 5,000 and move that into base salary. Yeah, that answers my question. And yeah, good deal. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's gonna be no loss right. like salaries. Okay, this is just my personal input on it. I would think that if I'm a teacher and I go get my master's degree, and it's expensive, you know, of course, to go continue to get your education. I don't know that that would be much of an incentive, $500, versus how much it costs to go out and get your degree. Sure, and, and we, talk, we talked about, uh, with the, the district, we talked about the, the $500 was just an option. It could be as much as a thousand or fifteen hundred. There's there's different routes you can go there. Um, what we wanted to ensure is that no teachers are going to to lose salaries there. Uh, and one one thing you referenced earlier, if we look at, at the other districts, um, and this is actually in the report, the final report, page twenty seven, you can see what the neighboring districts are paying for master's degree stipends, and that that could be adjusted. That's an adjustment that the district can make, and the district can decide that. No, we want it, We want that master's degree stipend to be a thousand dollars, or we want it to be fifteen hundred, or whatever amount that you choose there. Okay, Madam Chair, uh, 
It, it's the uh, final report, so it was 41 pages. We've got it loaded on your laptop, so oh, I can I give me a minute and, and I'll pull it up for you all to, to go through it. Yeah, because it goes up to page 25. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, so I, I would like to add, while I think uh, he's pointing out the report, that um, we agree with you. I mean, a, a master's um, a master's degree um, is, is certainly um, an expense for a district. But what we're looking uh, for an employee, um, what we're looking at here is uh, certainly what uh, benefits uh, the student more. Um, through instruction and what we are seeing and where um, the research is um, confirming is that uh, teachers with a master's in the content area um, are uh, more successful in student gains and achievement than a master's that is in any area whatsoever um, that may not necessarily d directly contribute to instruction. So while we do agree with you that uh, there is recognition for masters, um, I think that it is the content-specific masters where we see more gains and where the research um, has uh, clearly confirmed um, the results in student gains and achievements. And um, we have recommended, uh, we have talked about a, um, a uh, subject area uh, master's degree consideration in lieu of the $1,500 um, or $1,000 master's. So maintaining $500 and then the district using the monies from that cost more effectively to initiate a content specific master's degree step and that would be um, stronger. Madam Chair, No, that's okay. It's okay. Whenever you're ready, I'll kind of summarize what we just talked about. So take your time. All right. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll wait. I can, I'll kind of summarize uh, what, we, what we just discussed because I know we talked about a lot right there concerning the masters. A um, uh, couple things. One, we're talking about a $500 shop in here. We did provide cost estimates for $500, $1,000, and $1,500 to the district in order to make those decisions on what be, meets the needs of the district. Um, and then to recap what Ms. Cadena was saying, is we're seeing a trend of districts shifting towards paying a stipend for a master's degree in general to content specific master's degree. The example I'll give you, I was, I was a math teacher at one point in time, high school math teacher, and so um, I got a master's in educational administration. That helped me to become a, 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 an administrator at the campus level, but it probably did not really helped me to become a better math teacher. 
if I'd gotten a master's in mathematics, I probably could have been a better math teacher for my students. And so we're seeing districts move towards paying an additional stipend for a degree specific masters that pertains to their subject area or to their their um, job their specific job thank you sir and mr mancha go ahead sir i, I guess this question will be for you mr nice what will we be paying the, the, our masters before it, yeah it, it it varied it no varied. no i understand sir i'm asking mr numbers they they were on a separate master schedule so it depended on the schedule that we had in place for the year uh, so that's very, the level so yes so it varied just like the bad give me scale. give me a round number <laughs> it, it, so is it yeah, I, so I the difference between that, yes the difference between uh, the bachelor's uh, scale and the master's scale, it ranged between 500 and 6,000. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the short right? okay. so, so, so let, let, me, let me finish. So we're, we're going to tell our teachers, you know, the ones that were making close to the 6,000. Well, this year we're going to get 500. Because the other 5,500 is going to roll into their into salary, their so they won't lose that 5,500. So they're still going to get their yes, money? Yes, sir. So how are, how are you going to separate that? So how does the stipend work in there? Uh, the, the, I'm not sure I, I understand your question specifically. Well, they were making anywhere between 500 to 6,000. But but you're, you're, we're talking about total salaries here. Yes, sir. Okay, so their total salary is not going to decrease. They're, it's actually going to increase because they're going to get the $825 uh -huh. pay increase if the 1.5% one, one is it. With well, the 1.5%. Correct. So if a teacher. So they're going to get an additional stipend of $500? No, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. The, the stipend, the stop, we're, we're shifting the funds. If, if their stipend is currently $5,500, mm -hmm. now their stipend is going to be $500, but the other $5,000 is going to be rolled into their base pay. So, so salary is not going to change. It's just in a different bucket is all it is. But the salary is going to be the same. Then they'll get the general pay increase on top of that. They'll get the additional in this $825. Mr. Munch, yes. and just to clarify, it's only that's going to apply to those teachers that are currently receiving that right now. Yes, Okay. Correct. So those teachers that are currently receiving over the $500 stipend, okay, if they're receiving $1,500, that means the five hundred dollars is going to be part exactly. of their stipend. And, and I, and the I other one thousand, right? The other one thousand will be put in their actual paycheck throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, sir? Thank you. Yeah, I, and I and I understand all of that. Okay. Okay. So you came up with a midpoint through this process of using the twelve districts, right? I came up with the midpoint. I'm not on, the, on the on the on the salaries for the masters no sir no well uh, now you're saying the 500 no the salaries there there is a we do have a median salary of what the districts are paying yes and and you can see that in the report that's in yeah the report. I'm, I'm looking at it right now madam chair go ahead mr there, there's an analogy that i'd like to make that i think would help us all that's different from harlandale to other school districts that I want to share. I'm going to use two examples. I'm going to use myself and Mr. Soto, for example. Mr. Soto, how many years you have in the, in the business overall? We're both classroom teachers, I'm going to say. 22. I have 35. So both he and I cross the stage tomorrow from Texas A&M, San Antonio, with a master's degree. My compensation will be more than Mr. Soto's, no, so even though we graduate at the same time with a master's degree. Was Tabby's, Tabby's recommendation is to, to look at the practice of other school districts where it says both he and I graduated with our master's degree at the same time. So we come into the business with a master's at the same time of that year. So from that time on, we are, we- That would be just an increase. Yeah, and that would be an increase. What we do is that 
If I get my master's at 35 years of service at Hardendale, I get the $6,000 jump. Mm -hmm. He won't get the 600. If it was his first year, he got the 500. If it was 10 or 11, he may get 25, $3,000 difference. It all depends. The other thing that they're, they're sharing with us in the school district have done is, Mr. Soto is a teacher just like I am. I get mine in mid-management administration. He gets it, he's a math teacher, a science teacher, a social studies teacher, in a content area. He gets it in the content. Our, our, right now in Harlem, my, my pay raise and his pay raise is the same. And one of the other suggestions is, and the research says, and the Spanish shared with us, and in conversation with other, with other individuals, is that right now the study and the research says that Mr. Soto's degree in that content specific area where he got his master's tends to help our kids more because of his further depth of knowledge in the content than, than mine you. helping my kids. We're teaching the same content. We're teaching math, he's teaching math, we're teaching science, he's teaching math. He can better help his kids than I can. Because my master's were in mid-management administration, his was in the content. So I just wanted to give that analogy now because it kind of helps us and we kind of understand where we're at and what we're looking at. And uh, and hopefully that helped. I hope I, I didn't confuse anybody, but I just wanted to make that announcement. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Orestia. The, the only problem I, uh, that, I, that I see with that is in the elementary level. When we have <coughs> classrooms where we have, let's say, third grade, and there one, you have one teacher that's doing reading, one teacher doing social studies, and what have you, and they get, uh, get their master's degree in, in reading, uh, then they get all of a sudden they get moved to fourth grade and they're teaching all class, all class, all, all, all different areas of social studies, math, science, what have you, then they're going to lose out on that 500. What, what happens to that, that stipend? They're going to lose out on it because it was arranged just for that one criteria, or are they going to keep it because they'll be grandfathered in? I don't I know think that that's what we can run into. We haven't gone over that scenario yet, right? Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. the content specific. Uh, no, ma'am. I, I think to, to try to I understand what you're saying here. And did you want to jump in? Yes. Well, one of the things I, I think we're, um, TASB had, had informed the district that there's an increasing trend towards stipends and content area. And we're, we're making big changes in our, in, in recommending big changes in our compensation system. We felt that at this time, we weren't ready to address um, a master's based on content. We were just doing we were just going to consider masters. But as Mr. Madrigal and, and someone else, and I apologize, and Mr. Hobbs said, like we have people that we hire that have a master's in um, like biblical or like uh, like theology. And so but because they have a master's, they get, they get the stipend of whatever the range is. And so, but we felt that we were not, we, it was a, we were not quite ready to consider the content at this time, that instead let's just look at adjusting to a master's stipend. Um, but going in, in theory in the future, um, it would have been my recommendation, again, future self, Mr. Rudesti, that if I were a fourth grade teacher and I was teaching all subjects or whether I was teaching an individual subject, the fact that I had a core content makes me a better teacher in the classroom and my recommendation to the superintendent would be if there's a core content awarded to the teacher. And I do want to make sure because, you know, I know this, it's not going to come, sure. like you said, it's not going to come to us this time, but in a year, two, three years, and, and we're not here, I just want to have it in the back, you know, and stored away so that you know that when this comes back again, that we're ready to address that situation so that no teachers come up short. And, and no, as um, Ms. Tudick said, those are conversations that we, We've had uh, TASB with the administration, and, uh, and we've talked about some of those issues. Well, how do we handle those issues and, and different strategies? So those are conversations that are being had. Go ahead, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan. Uh, uh, Mr. Charles, I have a couple of things uh, just from the conversations that uh, my colleagues and I were all kind of discussing. Um, uh, the first thing is the analogy that uh, Mr. Marigal was alluding to. Mm -hmm. um, so is what's gonna happen if we're grandfathered into the scale, obviously, because we had the situation at South Santa Cruz because um, I get a stipend for 1200, uh, but I have a uh, master's in special ed, but I'm a history teacher, so 
I don't get the core, the subject area masters because uh, I'm teach, I'm not a special ed teacher. Um, but you know, if I had it in history, then I'd get the 2000 versus the 1200. Uh, but from what he, what kind of he was referencing to, if he comes in as a 35 year old uh, teacher that doesn't have a masters, he can go back and get his masters, and it's going to be uh, retroactive, where he's going to be able to come in with 35 years and uh, be able to have the masters uh, go back to that step system from 35 years ago when he started. Uh, no, he, he would uh, he would get the 500 or whatever that you, the district okay, chooses to adopt. Was, that's how you kind of was saying. Uh, so it's not uh, so if he's at year 35, decides he's a continuing uh, learner, wants to get a master's, he's going to come in with 35 years, but he's only going to get 500. He's going to get if, if that's what the district adopts is the 500 okay. stopping. Yes, sir. All right. Now, what I think what we were referencing to also was um, I can remember looking at when I was looking for a job. Uh, back in 2010, 2011, uh, the difference in the scales when I was looking at SISD, South Sand, Southwest, Harlandale ISD, the difference from what I think we were asking uh, one of my colleagues is it's always been $500, the difference between uh, bachelor's and a master scale at Harlandale, right? Because they were only going up $500. Uh, that was only the difference between the stipend where they were, they were starting at 45000 or we started at last year 50000 the difference was all the step system was always just five hundred dollars more for whatever that ending salary was or that starting salary was, right? Uh, or, no, do you know that? And no, sir. I, I know what it is now. I'm not sure what it was in the past, and and now it's based on years of because experience. Because to me, I, I mean, just from looking at it, um, it's always just been like this person's the forty the starting pay five years ago was maybe forty six five hundred, and that meant that the starting pay for uh, oh, like for masters was like 40, 47 for, for a teacher yeah, zero years, years of experience yeah. Yeah, yes sir so it's always been like a five, to me it's like it's always been a difference of five hundred dollars right? that, that's my understanding as well but okay. then what happened as you went down the experience level that yeah just there was a separation different years and they had different steps you got so it. they were grandfathered into a different bracket I, I believe you're correct yes um, did you want to add to that Mr. in in um in my experience in HR when I'm looking at the masters versus the bachelors it's, there's there's not quite a system where it's it's always been from bachelors to masters where whatever this one was it was you know five hundred dollars more um, you'll, you'll notice that very if, if you take a look at it, it it's it's not always been quite as clean as, as you would a mathematician would like it to be um, and and so what this is trying to do is establish a little bit more rhyme and reason to how we do it because when you look at what we had historically it, it it's it's hard to to um, ascertain a pattern there but ha has we have we offered more in the masters of course has it been a consistent difference i would say no okay. so i mean whenever you look at the the total like the stipend at the end you know when you look at all the stipends of the salaries when you're looking for a position uh it, it hasn't always just been five hundred dollars like a set limit like five hundred dollars stipend no sir case. no no sir not not in my experience it's based on a separate it, it's based on a separate no but coming in as a new teacher i'm not talking about as you're getting i'm talking about just like year one to 39 when you look at the list all right and you're looking at the position what potentially you could earn as a new personnel whether you come in at one year or five years or ten years um it's always just been a difference of what it, it'll vary between whatever the scale is at the time for a bachelor's or whatever you know, scale it just, is like for that bachelor's. year we adopt that that, that rate so so exactly so the like the last years we've been uh, adopting a percentage increase based on each of the steps so based on the amount of what it is at uh, step 10 for our bachelors we multiplied that percentage by whatever the increase was same thing for the masters so then that whatever they were earning at year 10 that was multiplied by the increase say it was four percent so you're always going to get that big variance depending on what the percentage is being calculated on so that got further away of a, I I this all of kind of difference. clear my head and now I'm entirely confused. I think I think so I know what I mean because I'm just asking specifically when it says what's the stipend, it's five hundred dollars, right? On this new proposal, well, that, that's more than it wasn't just a set amount. No, sir. It but, was based on a salary so, scale. Okay. Can, can, can I ask a question? Because this, this is, I, I don't know why this is so convoluted or whatever. Um, 
they has a list like this is what you get for each sport you coach. This is what you get for getting for having a master. Is it not that clean? No, no sir. It's never because I mean I know there's a variance in every district. No. But I mean as long as I've been uh, a teacher, it's gone up maybe a thousand for me, and then it went up two hundred dollars to twelve hundred. But are, are we not looking at it like that? Because I mean I know that there is other people that received a master's or obtained a master's before me, um, but we're looking at a difference of. You know, some of them were potentially going to lose six, seven thousand dollars because they were looking at doing something different. Um, and me coming in as only having uh, three years with the masters, I was still stuck in pigeonholed to that one thousand. I wasn't going to get the six thousand because I didn't come in twenty five years prior. Can, can I can I interrupt a little bit? Sure. If you'll if you'll go back to slide number six, um, I've, I've got it up here on the screen. But this shows uh, so. The, this graph shows. I think there's a way to point here. You just point over here. So this is this is your bachelor's right here. What we're showing is the variance from the bachelor's to the master's degree. This is the way it's currently set up, Carlo. So a teacher with zero years of experience, uh, a teacher with a master's degree is making five hundred dollars more than a teacher with a bachelor's degree. But a teacher with twenty-six years of experience. A master's degree is making a little over two thousand dollars more than a teacher with a bachelor's. A teacher with thirty-four years of experience is making over six thousand dollars more than a teacher with a bachelor's. So it, it varies based on your experience. It's not just like you said. It's not. There's not a schedule that says the master's degree is X amount. You have to look and say, okay, how many years of experience does this teacher have? Well, if they have. 22 years of experience, this is how much their master's side is. Does that make sense? Does that help a So it, it, it's different for every teacher. Yeah, I mean, with me, it, it makes sense in terms of the variance. What I'm looking at was just the first year. It's a difference of $500, and I, I guess that's what I was more for. That was more so, I, I assume that it was just a clear number down the line. And to, I know that there's differences in numbers, but I mean, uh, I'd assume even if we got a brand new teacher with 26 years and a master's, are they gonna be getting that same difference they're coming in?